Good afternoon ladies and gents and you're going to join me on a whistle stop tour of famous, infamous, notorious and just plain right interesting people buried in East London Cemetery. Hope you will enjoy what you're going to see uh, and let's join me on the tour. Afternoon ladies and gents. Um, I'm at the cemetery, been doing a bit of tidying up on family graves for a couple of days and uh, I thought I'd do a tour of the most uh, famous, infamous, interesting graves of people obviously. Um, we start at the earliest one and our most infamous poor woman, Elizabeth Stride, Jack the Ripper victim. Her uh, maiden name was Gola, Godaf's daughter. Uh, 1843-1888. This is the grave of Elizabeth Stride. She was buried in a public grave or common grave. The grave has been very well looked after over the years. Vandalised several times over the years as well. Hence why she has a newer stone. And this granite stuff has been put in by the cemetery. The cemetery do take good care of this grave, I must admit. So yeah, this is Elizabeth Stride. Um, she is a Jack the Ripper victim, 1888. She's our earliest one. Uh, a tragedy, of course. Here, a pennies and whatnot. And the local story is, so one of the cemetery keepers told me, that it's um, prostitutes, modern day prostitutes, who come and put the coins there as a blessing or a remembrance to Elizabeth Stride. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the start of our tour, East London Cemetery, 1888, Elizabeth Stride. Our next one, I'm afraid, is going to be another tragedy, that's also in the Victorian era, you'll join me for that one in a minute. Here we have our second tragedy, the Jarvis family. Sarah Jarvis, age 39, and all of her children, Anna aged 16, Mary Ann aged 14, Thomas aged 12, William aged 10, Louisa aged 8 years, Alice aged 5 years, George aged 3 years, Caroline aged 2 years, Elizabeth aged 3 months, all perished in a fire on the morning of the 26th of December 1897 in Bethnal Green. Um, and then right below which you can't see because the headstone sunk down a lot. Thomas, the husband. Thomas, the husband, was very ill in hospital with consumption. And while he was in, in hospital with consumption, very likely dying anyway, his entire family were killed in a fire on Boxing Day morning, 1897. Wife and all his children. Um, no one could bring themselves to tell the poor man. And he died a day after the tragedy. Uh, this was a very, very poor family, and this caused an outcry. It was slum living. People had complained about the road because bollards were there, and people had complained that the fire engines of the time, which were obviously horse-powered, steam-driven ones, couldn't get through, and it was a tragedy waiting to happen. This, unfortunately, was that tragedy. So, yeah, this is the Jarvis family. I did clean this one up a few years ago now, and it came up lovely white as snow, but it sunk down a lot, um, there's a lot of people buried in this one and yeah so there we are that's the Jarvis family that was our second tragedy bless them all see you all in the next part of the video ladies and gents and, a, and an RIP to these poor people didn't want them to be forgotten forgotten poor happens now happens back then didn't it so there we are Cole Hans Lodi spy shot at the Tower of London, First World War. Um, he was the first of the spies to be shot and is the only one to have his grave own grave marker. Uh, we'll be seeing the other spies next. Here we are, the grave of the, or marker of the other spies. Um, they're all mentioned on the one stone here.
as I say, they're here, and Carl Hans Lodi is over there. He's the only one to have his own marker or grave. All right, here we are. Here's a very interesting one that not many know about, I must admit. Um, this man fought in the American Civil War, was uh, migrated to England and died over here. Was buried in a common grave, but bearing in mind he was given the Medal of Honour, he was um, given this gravestone. I don't know whether the American authorities arranged the gravestone or the English authorities arranged it. Um, Morris Wagg, Medal of Honour. Mate of USS Rhode Island, born July the 23rd, 1840, and died on June the 22nd, 1926. And he is buried literally just a few meters away from Elizabeth Stride, who's buried there. That's Elizabeth Stride, the Jack the Ripper victim. And this is our Medal of Honor war hero, really. I've got American roots myself, so this is also one that's interesting to me. Should be uh, it's a little bit of history, so it should be interesting to everyone. This is a bit of Anglo-American history. This man, glad he's remembered and wasn't just forgotten. Also, he has the granite which was put in by the cemetery a few years ago, and the grave is well looked after. Every couple of months or so, they come along, give it a good tidy up. Right. So, 1926. Um, I'll do a little bit of research on this man if I can, try and find out a little bit about him. FamilySearch.org is uh, pretty good for American war records, especially for Civil War. I found a few of my own records like that. But yeah, this man's obviously it. Look, Medal of Honor, which is uh, that's an amazing little piece of history. So, yeah, that's Morris Wagg. May he rest in peace. And thank you from his country of course and our country for his service yeah yeah take care everyone more of our war heroes uh, second world war killed by enemy action in execution of their duty on sunday the 8th of december 1940 at gainsborough road school number 16 afs station uh, west ham e15 Auxiliary Fire Service Station, um, ARP wardens and that kind of thing basically. These men, a bomb hit their headquarters and they were all killed. Badland, EW, Cumberland A, Dell FW, Air, AC, Marriott, H, Murray, AE, Palmer, WJ, Gage, FC, Hammersley, which is a name I know, uh, J S McEwen S interred privately Reverend W D Tarling Station Padre and then on this side you've got their ages uh, age 31, 29, 37, 47, 32 37, 33, 32, 32, 26. It doesn't say our old Reverend Tarling was, but yeah, these men all deserve to mention. They are, if anyone wishes to come and pay their respects, we're at the churches here. Burial Chapel, Cremation Chapel. Burial Chapel was built first. This cemetery didn't give itself over to cremations until 1952 so uh, I think the chapel came later I'm not sure exactly when this one was built but it is later than this one a lot of work been done on it recently it kept flooding because it sunk down we're on very clay wet ground so yeah um, I'll t yeah this one's uh, someone's mentioned their surname it's the same so I'll Tag them in the comment section, see if it might be of interest to them, might be a relative, you never know. Right, take care all. Just going to another one, and just remember one of our war heroes, uh, S.A. Hawkins, The Black Watch, 13th of July, 1945, age 29 years. In a garden of memories, you are always with us. Thanks be unto God. 
for his unspeakable gift and his number was 2763150LSJT Black watch Which one just fell over, that's strange Not done that all day, anyway That's SJ Hawkins and The one I was taking you to see is because there are a lot of Chinese graves around this section and they have been for quite some time so, this one in memory of the Chinese who have died in England this memorial was presented by Mr N.G. Fook F-O-O-K of 33 Cavendish Road Brondersbury, NW, on the 7th day of November 1927. There we are. Right. Okay. And here, ladies and gents, is our second but last. We're not going to be in date order with our next one, but here we are. Um, this is the much loved and famous actress Queenie Watts, keeper of the Ironbridge Tavern and performer of, at the Ironbridge Tavern as well as on the stage, on camera. A much loved woman was uh, Queenie Watts, she was very down to earth apparently, very earthy, very East End. Uh, Queenie Watts, 21st of July 1923 to the 25th of January 1980. A much loved and popular film and TV actress of her time. The biggest voice and heart of the East End. James William Watts, Slim, that was her husband, reunited with Queenie in 1980. Slim couldn't live without his Queenie. Um, yeah, they really loved each other. Um, yeah, this is, uh, there'll be a little bit of a follow on of this with some material of Queenie Watts uh, doing her thing. But this one is uh, in garden number two, East London Cemetery. So you come straight in at the gate, which is over there, straight down here, garden one, garden two, and she's right here. You couldn't miss her, she's second from the last. If anyone likes to pay her respects to her, she's not, uh, don't get many flowers in that, does Queenie, but the grave is well looked after at one point. Everything was gone, but this has all been put back, and I don't know who did it and who rebuilt the grave and whatnot on that. But yeah, there we are. Take care, everyone. See you all in the next part of our video. And last but not definitely least, and I'm out on my date order because we're in the Victorian area. Believe it or not, under all this forgottenness, is not a famous man or an infamous man or a notorious man. It's an ordinary working doctor, a good man. I'm not going to give you his name or anything yet, or tell you anything of the story yet, but this will feature again soon. Okay, everyone, I hope you've all enjoyed the tour of. Uh, oh, I say enjoyed, it's a bit gorish, isn't it? Um, found it informative, the tour. If you have, please give it a like and a share. Elizabeth Stride, who was the first to appear in our video. Interesting woman, have a read up about her if you're interested in that kind of thing. Some more information on the Jarvis family, background info on the fire. Um, have a read and see what you think. Real tragedy this one was. Carl Hans Lodi, the first of the spies to be executed at the tower and the only one at the cemetery to have his own grave or grave marker. Here you're seeing the exterior of the miniature rifle range at the Tower of London. This is where all the World War I spies were executed. Here you're seeing the interior of the rifle range and the location for all the executions. Last person to be executed here was in the World War II and that was Joseph Jacobs. Maurice Wagg has turned out to be a very interesting person actually. Wikipedia famous, uh, obviously well known and you'll be seeing him in the next image. And here we have him, Morris Wagg, the only known image to exist of Morris Wagg. It's very blurry, um, but here we have the man himself, a Medal of Honor winner. The World War II bomb map marks the location with the little red bomb you can see of um, where the bomb struck at Gainsborough Road and where these men lost their lives. 
Men of the Black Watch and S.A. Hawkins is believed to be in this photo, but I'm not sure which one he is. I'm afraid we'll have to try it in F, darling. Yes? Yes, here I come there. The best is yet to come. Sorry, wrong word. Out of the tree of life, sorry. Now, out of the tree of life, I just picked me a plum. You came along and everything started to hum. Let's go in lovely, keep it nice, the best we get to come. The best is yet to come, and then won't it be fine? You think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. I think so. Yeah. Have a little drink and then we'll do it all through again. The best is yet to come. What lovely words. You know, they remind me of Slim. And, I, and we used to work over the road from six till two in the morning. I remember. Of course you do. We knew each other then. Yes. Saving enough money to buy this old pub. That's when I used to sing in other pubs too, to earn money to go towards it. Still, it's a great old pub. I wouldn't change it for all the world. <laughs> Of life, I just picked me up. You came along and everything started to hum. Still, it's real good, but the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Good idea, Queenie. 